Do you want to experience maximum success when it comes to trout trolling? If you do, integrate trolling flies into your arsenal. Go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of Kel Kellogg's signature series trolling fly kits today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. Um, we are coming off a crazy stretch of weather here in the Sierra foothills. Um, it started off here at my house with about, oh, I'd say seven or eight inches of snow. Um, that was followed up by freezing conditions. I had to put salt all over the place to keep from falling down. Um, then the, the snow turned to rain. We got huge wind, which partially ripped the storm door off of one of the entries to my house, which I have to fix today. So bottom line is, and, and then for the last about 30 hours, this is the first time I've been outside when it, when it hasn't been raining for probably, well, I know it rained for at least 30 straight hours, um, maybe more like 36 straight hours. So anyway, it's been nuts. And uh, I haven't been out to film, can't film when it's, when it's raining sideways. So. I'm out here, you know, a day, day like this, I gotta do some chores, but it's a good day to, to hang out in the house, drink some hot coffee. My wife got me this, this is the hugest coffee cup I've ever seen. Gina picked this up for me, so thank you. I think it's an early Valentine's Day present, but uh, good hot coffee, and I'll, I'll show you something here. I've been playing with tackle, so it's a, it's a good day for that. I've been building tackle and playing with tackle, but I just get a peek at this. This is my one of my personal sets of flies for this upcoming season. I've just been stocking this thing up, but this is the biggest fly box I've ever seen. Look at this thing. It's like blocking out the entire screen. Anyway, those are some of my flies. I've been playing with that, um, but today, since I don't have any new video, I thought I would post up some... Uh, some retread video, Wes and I call it. You know, we've got a huge database of stuff here on the channel. And uh, you know, one of the cornerstones of trout fishing success is understanding the importance of temperature. So I've re-edited one of my, uh, my videos about trout temperature. I hope you're gonna enjoy it and I hope you're gonna find it valuable. And uh, we will be back here real soon with some brand new video. I've got a big schedule of shooting set up for tomorrow. We're supposed to have sunny conditions, so it should be nice and clear and crisp and awesome. Anyway, for now, enjoy this, uh, this look back video and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Thanks for all the support and you have a wonderful day. Fish on, fish on, baby. All right, that was right under the surface on a uh, red and gold cripple lure. Hard to beat that cripple lure up in the high Sierras. A hefty feeling fish. I know he's just a planter, but man, he, uh, he feels good. They all feel good. <laughs> Been a little slow morning here. Um, saw some fish on top feeding on insects and uh, switched some things up and uh, put that cripple lure on. It took about a minute and a half. And those fish got active, um, get hooked up. And that sun is bright. Hey, I see the trout. Nice fish. Whoa. There we go, cripple lure, baby. <laughs> get this guy off the hook and get him back in the water ASAP and uh, go from there. But uh, Triple Lure produces again. Good stuff. The Trigger Spoon Junior. Big enough to draw strikes from trophy trout, small enough to round up a limit of pan sized fryers, and the perfect spoon to put on the end of your line when the trolling gets tough. Pick up your kit at Trigger Spoon Juniors today at fishhuntshoot.com. Kellogg here. An angler named Ron down in Oakley, California, he gave me a call the other day and uh, he asked me a couple questions and one of the main questions he wanted answered was what do water temperatures mean when it comes to trout fishing? And uh, I thought I'd relate, you know, here on video what I told Ron over the phone because that's a, that's a common question and it creates some confusion for some folks, especially the folks that are just starting to target trout. So, you know, 
all trout kind of have the same temperature requirement, but let's kind of focus on rainbow trout because those are the most common trout here in Northern California and the trout that most guys, especially the new guys, are going to be targeting. So uh, for, for a rainbow trout, the most comfortable range of temperatures for them is anywhere from 54 to 56 degrees. That's when they feel the best. That is their ideal temperature. If they could set the thermostat, they'd want to be in 54 to 56 degree water. Now, they're comfortable all the way up to 65, 66 degrees, and all the way down to the, the low 50s, 50, 49, 48, they're comfortable in that span of temperatures. So here's how I, I relate you know, temperature to my fishing strategy. If I hit a lake and uh, the temperature is 66 degrees or less on the surface, I assume that there are gonna be rainbows right on top. Uh, especially early and late in the day when I'm at the top of that temperature range. If I got 66 degree water and uh, I, I hit the lake in the morning like it is right now, no sun on the water, I'm assuming there are fish up top. They're up there kind of prospecting, they're feeding, they're looking for targets of opportunity, stuff like that. Now, if, um, you know, anywhere from there all the way down to the lower 50s, I'm always assuming there are trout on top. Um, as the temperature declines and gets closer to, to 56, like right now I have 55 degree water, I'll assume that those trout are going to stay up near the surface all day long. There might be trout deeper, but I'm pretty confident that there are going to be trout in the upper, you know, eight feet of the water column all day long. Now, if the temperature's in the 60s, we may see those trout drop down a little bit, but there are variables to that. If they drop down, say, say we hit the lake, it's early like this, we catch a couple trout up top, then we notice that they drop down. Maybe they drop down to 18, 20 feet of water. The surface temperature is 66, 67 degrees. Um, so we drop down and we're catching fish. If we get a breeze in the afternoon and we get a lot of surface chop, that's going to create some current. And we may see those fish suck back up to the surface um, because they feel safe up there. A lot of oxygen up there with those little, little white caps breaking, stuff like that. But in general, if the water's in the middle 60s, I'll start out on top, but be prepared to drop down to the 20, 25 foot range as the morning goes on and the sun gets on the water. Cooler water, I'm assuming there's gonna be trout up top all day long. Now that doesn't mean I'm not gonna prospect some deeper water. I'm gonna have one line near the surface most of the day, say five feet deep, maybe even shallower than that, but I'm gonna prospect with another line, probably my lead core line, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna work 10, 12, all the way down to 17, 20 feet deep, and just kind of let the fish tell me, you know, where they're at, what their temperament is. Um, when the water continues to get colder, you can count on, on the trout to gravitate to the bank. And I'm talking about water that's down in the very low 50s or upper 40s. Um, you can count on the trout to gravitate towards banks, shallow water areas, areas that warm up with the sun. Um, in those conditions, and I talked about this in a video last week, when the water's really cold, your best fishing may take place at the warmest part of the day, say between 10 and two, 11 and two. That may be the peak of the bite. Whereas in the summer, when the surface temperature is high, the bite might peak, you know, before the sun hits the water and right, you know, just before evening, you know, kind of closes down and it gets dark. But uh, when the water gets really cold, um, you can look for those fish to move into shoreline areas, anywhere you see a spike in temperature. And the tributaries are a good bet, too. I just saw a fish jump right there. Tributaries are a good bet, too. Um, let's say we had a, had a rain, the lake temperature is maybe... 48 degrees something like that well if you got 50 degree water running into the lake it will draw fish and that that warmer little part of the part of the cove where that that creek is coming in that can be a real hot spot because not only is it holding warmer water it might be bringing in food but the warmer water is definitely the attraction in that situation um once the water hits you know 47 46 45 it can get tough to catch trout. They're gonna get lethargic. They're still gonna be near the surface, but typically in that situation, you know, I'll start slowing down. Not to say that a fast presentation won't catch fish, but as a general rule, day in, day out, when that water gets down into the middle 40s, you're gonna to need to slow down, 
you're gonna need to use more fish scent. They're just more lethargic. They don't have to feed as much and they're just not as active. Um, I've caught fish up at Eagle Lake all the way down to like 38 degrees. And of course people catch trout, you know, rainbow trout all the time, ice fishing and stuff in different parts of the country. Some of that goes on right here in the Sierras. You know, in the dead of winter, guys will go to Capels Lake and they'll catch rainbows through the ice. But just know, 56 degrees is the sweet spot. That's where you're gonna have your most active fish. As the temperature declines from there, um, you're gonna see the fish first, they're gonna gravitate to the shore, and then they're gonna get lethargic, and you're probably best served to slow down. Uh, your best option might even be to fish bait. You know, that's a great time to fish your worms, your power bait, and stuff like that. Um, one of my favorite presentations for really cold water, whether I'm in my kayak or I'm fishing off the bank, is to take a worm and squirt it fill, uh, full of Procure fish oil. That will make the worm float. It'll put off a lot of scent. And when a fish comes up and starts messing with that worm, he's gonna get a good shot of flavor as well. And that can really kind of tip the odds in your favor on uh, you know, a, a cold day when the water's really cold, the fish are lethargic. Um, scent definitely helps you in that situation. So that's kind of my take on temperature. You know, you gotta factor everything into your fishing strategy. And uh, you know, fish are cold blooded. And that is, a, that is a major consideration when you're out on the water, you know. What is the water temperature? How is it affecting the fish? Um, where is it dictating that the fish hold and feed? And what's it gonna do to the fish's temperament overall? So temperature, it's definitely a, an important factor. I've rambled on enough here about temperature and trout fishing, guys. I am jumping off for now. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on here most days, you know, sharing tips for trout and other species of fish. And uh, if you haven't went over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Tackle Store yet, check that out. There's a lot of cool gear in there. Anyway, you have a great day. I hope this catch, helps you catch more fish here as we go, you know, transition from fall into winter and things get really chilly. Um, I'm signing off. I'm going to try to hook up here. I will talk to you real soon. This is Kel Kellogg. Thanks a lot, guys. Wow.